which saw baddies send chills down our spines and which failed to scare anyone. We're here to answer that question by ranking the horror franchise's many villains from worst to best. Jigsaw is a divisive film within the Saw series, and it goes in a very different stylistic direction than its predecessors. Its addition to the series is also a point of contention for fans in terms of the series' continuity, which had previously been fairly airtight. Logan Nelson is presented as a veteran with PTSD, now serving as a police medical examiner and a key suspect throughout the events of Jigsaw. While working at a hospital, Logan accidentally mixes up John Kramer's x-rays with another patient, which leads to John's cancer going untreated. This error sees Logan placed in the trap that occurs before the events of the first film, where he seemingly dies first. However, he actually survives, and Jigsaw ultimately decides he doesn't deserve to die over an honest mistake. Thus, he makes Logan his original apprentice. Logan is even revealed as a co-creator of the original reverse bear trap game from the first film. Behind every great man is a woman, and in the case of John Kramer, that woman is his former wife, Jill Tuck. You are my heart. You always have been. You always will be. Jill stands out as the most innocent person among these antagonists. She doesn't operate out of any sense of vengeance or moral desire, but out of a sense of tying up loose ends. Jill is formally introduced in Saw 4 as a key part of Jigsaw's backstory. We learn that Jill and John separated after the death of their unborn child, which is what leads John to become the Jigsaw killer. Jill takes on a more major role in Saw 5 and Saw 6 when she is bequeathed a box as part of John's will. The box contains a list of the next crop of players and special instructions which lead Jill to put Mark Hoffman in the reverse bear trap, which he unfortunately escapes. The tables are turned in Saw 7 when Jill is placed in the reverse bear trap herself, which leads to her demise. Gordon crawls off into the darkness at the conclusion at the first Saw film, leaving hardcore fans with the question, what the heck happens to him? Don't, don't worry. I'll bring someone back. I promise. Finally, in Saw 7, it is revealed that after escaping the bathroom, Dr. Gordon had his wounds tended to by Jigsaw and was released back into the world. We go on to learn that while Jigsaw was grooming Amanda and Hoffman as tentative successors and inheritors of his legacy, he also kept Dr. Gordon around as an extra set of hands to aid him in his endeavors. Gordon not only assisted with the more medical traps of Saw 2 and Saw 4, he also helped Jigsaw choose the surgeon who operates on him in Saw 3. Most importantly, at the conclusion of Saw 7, Gordon kidnaps Mark Hoffman and proceeds to lock him in the bathroom from the first film, bringing everything full circle. Zepp Hindle serves as a creative red herring in the first film. Introduced as a mildly creepy orderly working in Dr. Gordon's hospital, Zepp is heavily implied to be the Jigsaw killer. The movie leads the audience to believe this in multiple ways including Zepp's presence behind the security cameras and the fact that he's the one who holds Dr. Gordon's family hostage. Zepp meets his end at Adam's hands, when the latter bludgeons him with a toilet tank lid. Adam searches Zepp's pockets for some kind of key to escape his shackles, only to find that Zepp had his own tape from Jigsaw and was merely a pawn in a larger game. Mark Hoffman is first introduced as a cop assigned to the Jigsaw investigation in Saw 3. He is later revealed to be Jigsaw's apprentice. Mentally broken by the murder of his sister, Hoffman engineers his own Jigsaw-style death trap for the perpetrator in the form of Saw 5's famous pendulum trap. You know why you're here, don't you? Given his status as a police officer, he is able to throw everyone off his scent. Everyone except for John Kramer, who doesn't take too kindly to someone jacking his style, especially in a way he deems to be inappropriate. Say what you will about Kramer, but at least he gives his victims a chance to win their game. Hoffman didn't, and that is what leads Kramer to take action. Hoffman serves as a main antagonist from Saw 4 to Saw 7. Introduced as a victim in the original Saw, Amanda is a former drug addict. After she becomes one of the only people to ever survive a jigsaw trap, John recruits her to help him carry out his work. I found myself a father, a leader, a teacher. The key difference between the two is that Amanda doesn't see giving people a fair chance as necessary to the games. In fact, she often injects her own agenda into her creations, rendering her traps unwinnable, a definite no-no in John's eyes. 
During the events of Saw 3, John engineers things to give Amanda one final chance to do things the right way. However, Amanda acts impulsively, coerced by Hoffman, and this leads to the demise of Dr. Lynn Denlon, Amanda herself, and inadvertently, John. It's very clear that Amanda wants to follow John's teachings to the letter, but her own demons and inability to separate herself emotionally from her work is what leads to her downfall. It is legitimately sad to see her bleed to death in front of John as he laments the fact that she couldn't pass his test. John Kramer has one of modern horror's most compelling backstories. After enduring tragedy and illness, he becomes so detached from the world that he dedicates the rest of his life to making sure people cherish their lives through the most heinous possible means. The morbidly ironic traps and games he devises for his players usually cause them to mutilate themselves or others for the sake of long-term survival. They are the series' trademark and the manifestation of John's twisted ethos. When compared to the likes of Freddy Krueger or Jason Voorhees, John stands out. He definitively dies in Saw 3, yet still manages to be present and active in the series. Though other villains might have become boring after a while, Jigsaw remains an interesting antagonist. Especially since, technically speaking, he never actually kills anyone. Sure, he puts people in horrific scenarios, but he always offers at least one logical way to survive. Tobin Bell brings a sense of legitimacy and class to what would have otherwise been a disposable series of torture-focused horror films. His subtle, powerful performance has made the Jigsaw Killer one of horror's most memorable villains. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more Looper videos about your favorite movies are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.